It's always intriguing to discover a film that not very many know about, but they should. It's like finding a lost treasure that's been buried and then the internet digs it up again. Films like Prisoners of the Lost Universe, Your Hunter from the Future, or The Galaxy Invader. Yes, it's definitely a good day for someone like me when an unknown treasure is discovered. And today that film is the 1981 biography Amin the Rise and Fall. Amin the Rise and Fall is a film that covers the eight-year reign of terror by Ugandan dictator Idi Amin, played by Joseph Alita. The film takes place between 1971 and ends in 1979 and goes over in great detail the atrocities carried out by Amin and his men, whether it be cutting ties with foreign powers, kidnapping foreign journalists, removing all Asians from the land, Just because of their race. I've never lived anywhere else. I'm a Ugandan. Or brutally killing all who stand in his way. <laughs> the film doesn't have a plot in the basic sense, as the majority of the film just shows how Amin carried out his atrocities, intercut with him living the easy life. The only other main character is his personal physician, Dr. Aloya, played by Thomas Batiste, who you can say acts as the audience receptacle as he witnesses Amin's madness. The movie is very unpleasant, showing off Amin for the sadist he was, killing, assaulting, and angering everyone in his wake. He kills men and assaults their wives. He dumps countless victims into the Nile River, and imprisons anyone who disagrees with him. The production of this film is very impressive, having a budget of 26 million, and being a joint production between the UK, Kenya, and Nigeria. There are numerous war scenes, a car race, and copious amounts of gore on display here. When released, many likened the film to an exploitation movie, and it does feel like one at times, whether it be Amin cannibalizing the body of his victim, keeping the heads of his enemies in an ice box, or taking part in voodoo practices. Some of this was rumored, but other things were actually omitted to by Amin in real life. Aside from that, the film is very true to life in covering the history within, from the 1976 Israeli hijacking case, the kidnapping of journalist Dennis Hills, who actually plays himself in this movie, to a men's losing war with Tanzania. The movie is also dedicated to all those who lost their lives under a men's reign. The movie went on to be a box office success, gaining $36 million at the box office, and winning five awards. There are criticisms to be had of this movie. The majority of it is how the line delivery is handled. While Alita plays a creepy Amin, some of his delivery comes off as comedic. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not, as some of the lines feel like Amin is laughing at his own quips, but other times the lines just come off as goofy. If it was done intentionally, it can almost be seen as a precursor to the action films of Wakaliwood, who use comedy to talk about serious situations. There are also some parts of the movie where it changes from being the dark, disturbing movie it is to having an almost lighter feel. During the racing scene, we get this almost romantic looking montage of a men racing with a girl he just picked up.
But aside from those small nitpicks, the film is definitely something I recommend everyone check out. This movie should be seen. I've heard of some people saying that sometimes when a film mixes comedy with a darker subject, the darker subject becomes more ingrained in our minds. So I highly recommend it. I'm the Cinema Fanatic. I will see you next time.